All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're talking about one of Synology's best features, especially for businesses and honestly, home users, and that's using active backup for business to protect your data. And so this tutorial is gonna be on how to use active backup for business to back up something like a Windows server or a Linux SMB server, much like your Synology NAS, but maybe it's a different use case. And it works phenomenally. Unfortunately, I don't have any Windows machines. I'm planning on buying Nook and throwing a Windows license at it. And so once that happens, I'll be able to do the active backup for business tutorial, setting up a Windows machine and being able to do a bare metal restore on it. Active backup for business, the ability to do a bare metal restore or browse previous versions of files on it, all in one package, all for free, is one of the biggest benefits of a Synology NAS. It is phenomenal. I've used it a few times helping out clients and it just works super well and allows you to have a complete disaster and recover from it phenomenally well. I'm very impressed by this package and I'm really excited to show you all the benefit it's got. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be going over how to back up a file server using Active Backup for Business. All right, so now we're in DSM and all we have to do is go ahead and open up Active Backup for Business. And so it's really easy. You can see right here, there's two different options once you download it from the Package Center, but the one you want is Active Backup for Business. The portal is the restore portal. So this is basically what allows you the shortcut to restore files and is really easy for that. And so now we're gonna go in and open it up. The first time you open it up after installing it, it's actually gonna require you to either authenticate with Synology, basically go on the internet and log into your Synology account. This way Synology knows that you're an active user. I don't know why they do this because it is free to download, but it might be to keep something like Xpology from using this, which is the open source version of Synology. Basically Synology is based off of Linux, so you have to give your source code for free if you use the Linux kernel. I'm sure I butchered that and I'm sure someone in the comments is going to explain how the license actually works, but more or less that's the gist of it. But once you've done that, you're gonna be brought to this right here and it's got a bunch of different options. And so for this, we're gonna be backing up a file server. And so that's really easy. We're just gonna go ahead and click add server. And we've got two different options here, an SMB server or an rsync server. Basically SMB is what most people are gonna be using. It is probably the most supported protocol between Mac, Linux, and PC. But if your operation is running an NFS server, it's probably run on Linux. I don't know why you would run on anything else. And so you're gonna be able to do rsync on that but for 95% of people choose SMB. And so we're gonna select that and now server address. So for me, that's 10.0.1.41. And one thing to note, it did not work with my .local domain here. For some reason, when I type dsm7.local here, it dropped an error where if I said dsm7 anywhere else on my browser, anywhere, it would work just fine. So that is just one thing to note. It's either gotta be a IP address or a DNS resolvable address. I do use this with freenos.spacerex.co and it works just fine. So for port, you're gonna to wanna to select 445 most likely. I don't know anyone who changes the SMB port. If you do, you probably know what you're doing, I hope. And so you know to change that. And now for account, just type in an account. This is any SMB account that has access to that machine. It'll have the same permissions to whatever that machine has. It's not a bad idea to go on that server and create a account for active backup for business for SMB. You can give it read-only permissions and it's just good to sequester off your network like that. Only give things access to the network at the level at what, which they need. And so that's not a bad idea to do. I'm not gonna do that here, but it's really easy to do. And just sign in. Oh, I typoed, it's 41. And now it'll say it was successfully created. Do you wanna create a backup task for the server? We're gonna say yes. And now you've got three different options, multi-versioning, mirrored, and incremental. And they've got a good learn more about this here. So I would really recommend going with multi-versioning. Multi-versioning gives you the ability to go back through time and select the exact file you'd like to restore at the exact time. It's very similar to hyper backup in that sense and it gives you really fine-grained control and it has a very little overhead. Its compression and deduplication works great. Then mirroring is basically what it says it is. It is a exact duplicate between two different file systems. 
If I delete a file on my main server, it will be deleted on this server, which is good for a restore. Basically, say your server goes down and you want to instead start pointing everybody to this. If you're using DNS or something, you could just point the DNS to this IP address and actually have everything carry over and act like the mirrored version was the original version. But other than that, it's not very useful. Because say the file server gets corrupt or cryptoed and everything gets deleted off of it. Well, Active Backup for Business will go, all right, everything's deleted over there, delete everything over here. And so it makes this not as good of a backup. But if you need a restore quick, you've got that. Then incremental essentially is like, all right, anything that starts changing from now, I'll start adding in. And so we're gonna go with multi-versioned. And so now this is the SMB share that we're looking at. We're gonna go ahead and select the file first, and we're gonna go ahead and click next. And now we gotta give it a task name. And for local path, you're gonna to wanna to put it in active backup for business and create a folder. We'll call it DSM7 backup and put it in that folder. Now you're probably gonna to wanna to enable schedule and you can also enable VSS for the SMB share. If your SMB share enables that, it's not a bad idea, but if it doesn't have it, it'll just error and not let you select this. So only select this if your SMB share uses that. And so now we're gonna have this run every day at three o'clock in the morning. And so now we can select what versions to keep. We'll do a smart recycle essentially, where it keeps all versions for, the, for one day, we'll say three days, and then the latest version of the week, yada, yada, yada. Basically goes down the list, and the most recent one will obviously satisfy all of these. And then it keeps going down like that, and any of the ones that's like, well, I've got two from last year, and we've expired all of these other ones, well, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And so there's a bunch of different options here for saying how long you wanna keep stuff. This is the big one right here, because this is gonna mean how much storage you need. Because all your files essentially from the server will have to be stored on here for three years. And so if you are adding and deleting a lot of files, they can end up really bulking up this. And so maybe you don't have this. Maybe you say, you know what, 12 months is okay. If I've got my data from the past year, we're fine. And really selecting it. You can start with something more aggressive now, backing up more stuff now, and then refine it later on, and it'll just delete the ones that are old. So we'll do that, and now we'll just click Apply. And we'll say Backup Now. This is gonna back up really quickly because there's not much data at all in there, and it's over LAN. And yeah, I think, I think there's like two files in there. And now it's backed up. So now we can go in and open up this Restore Portal right here. So the restore portal shows you where everything is at what time. It's really similar to hyper backup and time machine like a Mac. And so it allows you to just go in and say, okay, I want this file and just download it or restore it. It is really easy to use and just works really, really well. One thing to note, restore actually restores it to that destination. And so you'd actually need to enable that this user account has the ability to write as well if you choose to do that. And so there's just a lot of different options here. And as time goes on, this will fill up and you'll get more files. I chose a folder that had one file in it and this was just a DS store file created by my Mac. But basically it works really, really well. I've been very impressed by it. This is the same portal you get to if you go into Active Backup for Business portal right here, where you can select the role and as well as the tasks. Basically all the different servers you wanna look at. All right, and really that's all there is to it. Active Backup for Business is a phenomenal application. I'm so excited to start doing more tutorials in it. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, I've got a link for that in there in the description. All right, have a good one, bye.